Number 22. A farmer wants to fence off his four-sided plot of flat land. He measured the first three sides as shown A, B, and C in figure 3.6 O, and then correctly calculates the length and orientation of the fourth side D. What is his result? So basically what this question is asking, if we look at the picture, find vector D. All right, it's orientation and the magnitude of it. So in terms of you know, what's happening in this problem, D is really the resultant vector. Why? Because uh, vector D is arising as a result of vector A, then doing vector B, then vector C. Okay, so what's very important in this problem is actually to start reframing things. Instead of having the coordinate system here and then drawing this four thing, this four-sided shape in there, um, I'm going to start taking it uh, vector by vector. I'm going to plug them into my component table, organize it well, and then it'll be cake from there. All right. So uh, let's do this. So I'm going to create my component table. Component table. And my component table consists of X components and Y components of all my vectors. So I have a vector A, so I'm going to call VA. It'll have an X and a Y component. I have VB, and then I have VC, all right? And then the VD, which is the resultant vector, is simply the result, since I know it's the resultant, okay? It's the result of adding all three of them together, all right? Same thing for the Ys. And then these would then be the resultant coordinates or the resultant components. All right, so let's first look at vector A. So let's go to the picture. Here's vector A, I just outlined it, all right? And so what I'm gonna do is draw a coordinate system on uh, the page here. Let's just simple, here's the Y, here's the X. Now what I want you to do, find the tail of vector A. So look at the picture, I just dotted it in red. That's the tail of vector A, and place that tail at the origin of your axis. Now, draw the vector according to how it should look. So it should look like this. If you draw the tail there, it should look something like that, right? And they told us that A has a magnitude of 4.70, it says it right here, and that it is at 7.5 degrees, essentially, south of east. Okay, so how do I find the components of that vector? Well, let's create a triangle. So the components are, here's the X component of it. Okay, that would be considered the X component and it's positive. And then the Y component would now be closing up the triangle, creating a right triangle. And here's the Y component and it's negative because it's in the negative Y direction. So now let's first look at calculating my X component. How do we do that? So we know the hypotenuse, we know this angle, and we want to solve for the adjacent side of that angle, so let's do cosine. Cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Cosine of 7.5 will equal x over 4.70. Simply just do a cross multiplication now. So cosine of 7.5 times 4.7. And we get a value of about, and we'll use three sig figs, 4.66, so this is 4.66, uh, what are the units? Kilometers, it doesn't matter, kilometers. Okay, let's just go right away, plug it into the table, the, the component table. So we got 4.66 kilometers. Great, now let's calculate the Y component, right? So we know the hypotenuse, we know this angle, and we're looking for the side opposite that angle, therefore we're going to use sine of theta is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So sine of 7.5 is equal to now negative y over 4.70. So negative y is equal to, so sine of 7.5 times 4.7. And it works out to be, and it should be a small value, 0.613. Okay, and then y will equal negative 0.613 just moving the negative value over. So let's plug that into the component table for vector A. Negative 0 0.613. Wunderbar. Vector A is done. 
Guess what we're going to move on to now? Vector B. All right, so take a look at the picture, upper right-hand side. Here's vector B. All right, so let's first draw a coordinate system. So let me outline this. This is vector B. So let's draw a coordinate system. Here's my y-axis. Here's my x-axis. Now remember, the uh, tail, if you're looking at the axes I just drew, the tail of the vector must go at the origin. So let's go to the upper right-hand corner. Here is um, vector B, and where's the tail of it? The tail is the side opposite of the arrow, right? So here's the tail. So this tail, what I dotted, must go here at the dot. Now if I do that, the vector should look like this, right? Fairly straightforward. That angle of 16 degrees, then, you can clearly see should be the angle in here. That would be 16. All right, great. Now, how do I find the x and y components of that? Well, make your triangle. All right, I'm going to make the triangle relative to the angle that I know. So I'm going to draw a line straight up. That will represent the y-axis, right? And that's a positive y value. And then I'm going to draw a line over from there. And now that will represent the x-axis, but it's negative because it's going to the left. It's going in the negative x direction. All right, great. What's the magnitude of vector b? Well, look at the upper right-hand corner. They gave it to us, 2.48 kilometers. All right, so this value here in red is 2.48. Okay, we got everything we need. So let's first calculate the x value. I know the hypotenuse. I know this angle. I'm looking for the side opposite of that angle. Therefore, I'm going to use sine. So sine of theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Sine of 16 will be equal to negative x over 2.48. Negative x now will equal sine of 16 uh, times 2.48. And that comes out to a value of 0 0.684, considering sig figs and rounding, 68, 684. And then just move the negative sign on over, negative uh, 0 0.684. And that's again in kilometers. I'm just going to leave out the units. I'm getting a little lazy. Uh, but we, we will remember that everything is in kilometers at the end. So this is negative 0 0.648. I just put it in the table. And now let's do the calculation for y. Right? I know the hypotenuse. I know that angle. And relative to that angle, this is the adjacent side. So therefore, I'm going to be using cosine. So cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Cosine of 16 is equal to y over 2.48. And y will equal, let's take out the calculator, plug it in. So we got cosine of 16 times 2.48. And we get a value of 2.38. Okay, sounds fine. 2.38. Notice how repetitive this becomes after a while. But that's a good thing, because you want it to become so repetitive. That means it's going to be easy. So I plug that into my table. Okay, we now, what do we have left? Vector C. Got to do vector C. Okay, so here's vector C. And let's draw now a coordinate to describe vector C. Um, I'm going to do it in the bottom uh, right-hand side. I think I should have enough room. So let's draw a coordinate. So we got this, and we got this, okay? Now, find the tip, uh, not tip, excuse me, find the tail of vector C. And vector C's tail I just dotted, and I just drew an arrow there in the upper right-hand corner. That tail will go at the origin of my axis. Now draw vector C according to how it looks. Well, vector C looks like it should be about right in here or so, right? And that angle that they gave us of 19 degrees looks like it fits nicely right in here, 19 degrees. What's the magnitude of vector C? Well, the magnitude of vector C is 3.002 kilometers. So I know that's the magnitude. Great, now how do I find the components? Well, create your triangle. So here's the X component, right? That component has a negative x value because it's in the negative x direction. And then 
this would be the y component going straight up. And that would be a positive y because it's in the positive y direction. So great, we got everything we need. Let's start solving. So how do I solve for x? Well, I know the hypotenuse, I know this angle, and I'm looking for the side adjacent to that angle. Therefore, I'm going to use cosine. So cosine of theta is equal to uh, negative x over, well, let me, not let me, adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine of 19 will be equal to negative x over 3.02. Negative x will now be equal to, we got cosine of 19 times 3.02 will be equal to 2.86. And then x will now equal 2.86, but it will be negative. So plug it into your table. So vector C negative, uh, the x component is negative, oops, negative 2.86. Okay, wonderful. Let's do y's calculation now. So let's take a look to find y now. I know the hypotenuse, I know this angle, I'm looking for the side opposite of that angle. Therefore, I'm going to use sine. So I got sine of theta is equal to the opposite side of the hypotenuse. So the sine of 19 will be equal to y over 3.02. Now simply put it, plug it in. So sine of 19 times 3.02. I get a value of 0 0.983. So 0 0.983. That's my y value. So plug it on in, 0 0.983. Okay, a lot of work, but it's very organized and neat. Now, guess what? I got everything I need to find the components of my uh, resultant vector. So let's do that. Let's add up now, look at the component table. Let's add up all of those x's, all right? So 4.66 minus 0.648 minus 2.86 comes out to be a positive 1.15. Uh, and that's kilometers. Okay, great. Now let's do the same thing with my y's. So I got a negative 0.613 plus 2.38 plus 0.983. Okay, cool. So now I got 2.75. So those are the components. Those are the x and the y components. This is the sum of all the x's, and this is the sum of all the y's. So now why don't we graph this thing? All right, so I'm gonna create another set of axes right down here, right below. And let me make it a little straighter. Yeah, that's good enough. So let's draw the, let's draw the components of this vector. So first I'm gonna start with the um, x component, all right? So I have to move out 1.15 kilometers. I don't know, so maybe it's that long, right? This is 1.15 kilometers, let's say. Great, that's done. Now let's do the um, y component here, okay? So now we have to go up in the y direction. That looks reasonable. We have to go up 2.75 kilometers. Now where is the resultant? Well the resultant is the difference between the start and the end. So it's simply this straight line distance right there. And this is now what I'm looking for. That's the resultant value. Okay? So how do we find that? Well we can use Pythagorean's theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared. C is, the, C is the hypotenuse, and that's the same as R, so then you would just do the math. Right, but if you look on the right-hand side, I have a formula that's kind of already worked out. All right, so I just re, uh, reworked it, and um, it, it should be a little easier. So the resultant vector will equal the square root of the sum of all of the x's squared plus the sum of all of the y's squared. So my resultant vector here should be equal to the square root of 1.15, because those that was the sum of all of the other x components of the other vectors, plus the sum of all the y's, which worked out to be 2.75. And that's gotta be squared. Okay, so now finally, let's just plug this thing into the calculator. So second square root, 1.15 squared plus 2.75 squared. 
and that gives us a value of 2.98, 2.98 kilometers. That's the value of the resultant. Okay, so that's great. Now also, before we move on to the degree, look at how similar the line looks, right? Look at the bottom left. Look at the way my line is oriented. Look at the angle of it, right? And now go back to the upper right and look at the resultant vector here. Doesn't that look strikingly similar, right? If I were to simply draw a coordinate system right there, doesn't this vector, oop, doesn't, uh, doesn't this vector right here look strikingly similar? It does, right? And that's what, what it should be. So we did find that well. Okay, now only one thing left, okay? Look back to the picture in the upper right. What angle do they want us to find? So they want us to find this angle right here, right? The, this theta right in here, relative to this straight line coming down. Well, this angle would match what angle in my picture on the bottom left. Right, it would match this angle right in here, right? That's the angle they want us to solve for. So let's do that. I'm going to use my picture. Okay, so I, I want to solve for this angle. I'm going to use the opposite side and the adjacent side. So that means I have to use tangent. Okay, so let me try to squeeze it in here. So tangent, I'm going to write it up here a little bit. Tan of theta is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. So the tangent of my angle will equal 1.15 over 2.75. So now tangent of theta will equal, let's just do that 1.15 divided by 2.75. And this works out to be 0 0.418. And now take the inverse tan of that. So do second tangent of 0.418. And we get a value, we get a value of 22.5 seven degrees. Now that's great. That's the magnitude of the measure, but what's the direction of it? Well, how could you, uh, what, what would you tell me? Uh, so if we go back up, let's go back up to um, the upper right hand corner. So what I'm going to do is they really want me to start my axes at that red point. Okay, they really want me to start my axes right here. So let's draw them. Eh, let me move it over a little bit. Wow, that moved over even more. That's better. And there. Perfect. Now tell me, guys, relative to that coordinate I just drew, how is that angle being measured? Well, it looks like it's being measured relative to south, right? Or the negative y um, axis. Right? And it's... Me re measured relative to south and it's west of south because right? west is over here. So that's how I have to frame my answer now. So this angle that I just found, 22.7 degrees, that would be west of south. And now finally, that is the degree measure with its direction. And I already solved the resultant vector before. So putting it all together, the answer should be this. The resultant vector should have a magnitude. It should be 2.98 kilometers at 22.7 degrees west of south. The end. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Appreciate it. Please subscribe. And I will see you in the next lesson. Thank you.